Yep. Crickets in winter. Oh. Yeah, it is winter, isn't it? This week's been interesting on power. I heard some of y'all uh, responding to me. Y'all had power problems, too, throughout the week. So we'll see how this all works. Everything should be fine today. And if not, you just get to the Real Liberty Media website, and you can uh, get the file, which I post. It takes hours after I do the broadcast in order to post a blogcaster for all the links. So there's a lot of time spent that's, that you don't hear me and why I can't do a whole lot more in wanting to get you the background information for those of you that are interested uh, to continue the study and to find those things inside the information I send you that I'm talking to or even see more deeply what's going on given you want to uh, step up and, and come and go against those that are just taking you down. I don't think people, I really don't think people appreciate what's really coming down. They we, we have an idea, but I don't think people really appreciate it. And before I get too far, much farther, I mean, I'm going to get to a thing where somebody has uh, kind of put a synopsis together of what I've been telling you relative to food and the war that was coming, even names it a war. I'll get to that in a second. Uh, before we get going too much here, I better give you the episode. Uh, interrupting the current neo-coronial cricketism to bring you behind the woodshed, this is Cricketude Busting Episode BTWRLM407. Good afternoon, Dan Van Meter, in the RLM chat. Thank you very much. As I look over and see it, and that reminds me, I need to put another screen over the top, pretty much. There you go. Thank you. Everything uh, <laughs> everything goes in the last second, coming up as uh, trying to get everything done. I've got to tell everybody here, I think I'm not too much longer on Twitter posting. I may put one or two more with the final places you can go other than Twitter, for those of you that find me there. If you want to follow, that'll be great. I probably, I probably won't be going uh, putting anything there because mainly because it's become a blood clot if that if if the way the twitter works on it locks up my browser now it won't let me post it uh, wants to substitute ads for your posts which is very but it's been a very interesting watching what they do as i work on things to try and figure out what is the problem and watching what the corporations do to you, and you don't, you may or may not know this. I mean, you can you get an idea that it isn't. But anyway, they're they're swapping. Part of the shadow banning appears to be them swapping their ads for your content uh, where there's a place. So uh, some of you have more content swapping than others, and, and that's moved on over into your own feeds. And this only happens when I'm signed in. If I go to a browser that I'm not signed in and look at your feeds, it doesn't it doesn't happen. But they're trying to swap out, put ads in my face, and uh, I kick them back out. It's like a swipe fly swatter. And the battle on my on my machine is uh, such that it takes up a lot of bandwidth and uh, the CPU processing. So uh, Twitter has become the blood clot. I hope this is not indicative of of uh, Jack and what he's got in his leg, maybe uh, rising to his heart as he becomes uh, known and has been known for whom he is, and, and sadly in a way, because this is all us folks generally. But uh, Twitter may be, I think it's, uh, today I think uh, the harassment I was getting to try, I didn't make a post today. Uh, I think it's on the end. If you want to find uh, links, I'll try to, I think my last post there will be links where you can go everywhere else. So, and I think that's how I'm going to have to start to do things. Uh, I've been too busy, really, really too busy to rethink this, what social media means behind Woodshed. I've never been a big fan of it all. Partly like anything that I knew was going to be a, a used against us, I've never really been a big fan of. And I've tried to avoid some. Maybe not so smartly because, you know, Facebook, is a place where people go, so that's you know you got to you got to put your your if you will the bait in where the fish are, uh, the and the groupers, and hopefully you can snag somebody, uh, and hopefully pull them out of their of their stupor or whatever it is. But, but anyway, so uh, without wasting too much more time on all this, uh, I have to reconfigure what the the social media contacts. If you're if you want to comment to things, go ahead on Twitter, but my my feed will probably only show. Everywhere else I may find out I need to be. So moving on here on that, and thank you for everybody. This is why it's important that everybody that can repost this stuff, mirror it, uh, redo what you're going to do elsewhere, because it's just these uh, centralized places were traps. And they're causing, what they end up causing, as I can see, and I got a first glimpse of this at Oracle, when Oracle went down, how... All the unified, if you will, not that we were all speaking the same, but all the, the a central place for people to go get content, whether I agreed with it or not, it was all there, blows up, and then you have to go find people. And so this blowing up process is really to diminish us even more. And so at some point, we're going to have to look further in the future and pick up systems that 
we're not subject to uh, that way and that we have to dedicate ourselves to it. I won't get too lost in all that. I told you what I'm looking into. I doubt that many people will pick it up, but I'm looking into it anyway, this supposed federated type, dis, uh, dis really decentralized stuff, no blockchaining, no signing in, no nothing. Look at it at being a ghost in the machine and trying to keep, keep up with each other. I do want to uh, add the idea again, and I'm not sure if it's possible or not. The RSS feed system, to me, at least on the uptake, taking in information, may actually be what I may be looking to do to bring information in from all the people I'd be interested to hear from, like I do now on the Twitter, but I don't have a way to communicate out. So one of the ideas, and I don't even know if it's possible, is that if we all got an RSS feed built into, let's say, a WordPress site that we start, that we could be transmitting and receiving through RSS in the meantime if we're looking for some place that, that we can bring in that makes us the ghost in the machine system and we're not subject to all this nonsense. Anyway, uh, lo off the point uh, a little bit, but uh, what I wanted to open the broadcast with is maybe a little bit lighter, but this is serious in a way, and it should be. If it's not, uh, study finds, folks, here we go, the studies that we can trust here, we're, we're all into studies, we also trust these. Study finds most Americans trust Dr. Pepper over Dr. Fauci. A new study has found that more, far more Americans would trust Dr. Pepper than would trust Dr. Fauci. While Dr. Fauci has made some questionable claims over the past few months, Dr. Pepper hasn't made any erroneous predictions about the virus or recommendations when it comes to masks and other protective device measures. So the soft drink has rocketed up in the charts of the most trusted medical professional in America, as reported by Babylonian B. I actually believe that's a, that's a real story. Another uh, interesting real story... <laughs> along the lines of Babylonia B actually came out of Sputnik, and I think we can take it in the same vein, and jabbed by the same, in the same vein, where it's claimed on Sputnik, RT, a Russian health watch dog makes world's first micrograph of UK strain of COVID-19. Okay. Huh. <laughs> A scientist, and they show a picture, folks. Don't don't miss this picture. You got to go look at it because this is part of the joke. I can't tell you on the uh, on uh, on the on the radio. I guess I could describe it, describe it poorly, but you need to just see the picture. It's better, you know, pictures a thousand words. I'll just let you go see it. Scientist from Russia, public watchdog, not a actual research lab that's going to tell us anything, but a public watchdog have captured the first microscope image of the new coronavirus strain detected in United Kingdom. The watchdog announced Monday. All right, I'll just stop. Why didn't they just catch the one that they had? Just lasso that thing that they had in the population instead of going all the way to the UK for the new strain. They'll tell you that they can, they've developed a PCR test there that can differentiate and tells us that the mutant situation is a, can be detected. It doesn't make a difference relative to the Russian vaccine because the Russian vaccine doesn't actually adjust and touch the active parts of the virus. So to me, you can read it all, but if you read what you're, if you look at, know what you're reading, the PCR test cannot be made to do that. And so this micrograph go, causes me to go back and look at it, which it really, I mean, I don't, I looked at it the first time and got the clue. It doesn't look anything like the pictures that you've seen. And so it looks like, so I don't, I'm not going to even describe it. But anyway, you can see it. You tell me whether or not you see the spikes that they show us in that nice, wonderful model that they've created for us to see. And you tell me whether or not that spot on that so-called micrograph, why there's only one, and uh, how does it look like what they've been telling us, and how do they know that's what that is? Did they take it out? Did they amplify it with the PCR? This is where the PCR would come in perfect at work. This is where you take the one thing you identify and amplify it, and you get more of it. Now, it's still hybrid, hybridized by its signature, but it's still closer than having nothing. It's still closer than having a whole bunch to test. And so here we have just a micrograph that has no connection to the world in a, any capacity. It's there. It's a spot. It's an image. It could be anything. But they're claiming, notwithstanding it, actually kind of interesting when you look at it real careful, it's got some facets on it. It's kind of neat, almost in the sense, it gives me the sense it's a, a beehive, a hexagonal shaping to it. Uh, but anyway, that's not that's not the spikes, is it? It's not the thing they show us. Anyway, uh, to, along the lines of Babylonian B, I, I took this 
this story that they've got the first micrograph. Finally, folks, we've got it. We see the picture of the culprit. It's only taken all this time. And if this is the first micrograph, and if we've given credit, what the heck have you been living under until now that had any validity? And, and to that, and to the Fauci problem, the, the Fauci fraud, the guys whose name means figuratively to be in, in his jaws and taken, David, a, a video from BitChute, and, and his video from YouTube was blown down, so the video from D BitChute, uh, if you're interested, uh, with David, Dr. David E. Martin's dossier that he's put together over years. If you're interested, it's the Fauci and COVID-19 dossier, he says. He'll explain some things. He explains quite a bit of stuff that he's pulled together. You can get, I have not done it. I'm not interested to go this deep on that direction. I've got, uh, my hands are full, my plate my plates are full. The banquet plates are full with what we're doing now to try and move people ahead in, in their in their plan of, of addressment against the fraud against them behind the woodshed. What I do, help people here that this may be more for people understanding the fraud and who want to go down that path. That uh, this uh, Dr. David E. Martin has been doing research that has a document for you if you want to go register for it. Now, I'm not much of a joiner or a register, so a lot of people will say, let's go this and this and this. First thing I look at is if you ask me a question on a website for anything much, I'm likely not going to go there. In fact, I looked at, I think it was Rumble. They asked me if whether, they wanted me to say whether I'm male or female. That was too much information. So there's no way, the new future for us, when you see what's coming down, and you'd see it, you hear it, those of you that are, I'm speaking to the choir to some of this, when you see what's coming down, you'll realize, well, I've taken the position I have long time ago and why i'm real skeptical and just jumping into places i've done a few but that's just to put a place out there for the word to get out otherwise we're, we're strapped to get the word out at all so uh, dr david martin has something for you to say uh, to tell you i appreciated hearing it from him on the video uh, you can get a dossier a document 200 pages 100 pages is probably the most important the rest are a bunch of the people that are in the conspiracy of the crime against you which can be valuable but it makes your work a lot more that you can hear the interrelation on how this all works in the as a criminal syndicate. There's a handful of people that have been driving this. You have to really, you really have to understand that if you haven't picked it up from your study or you just listen to people, you have to go, you have to see this for yourself. As I, as, as I work with people, even if they don't quite understand what they're after, but they want to get this done, they are motivated to stop this thing. They have a question. We go find it in the black and white, as I keep telling you. The answer is for us is in those black and white things, those objective bases that they can't that can't be denied against you. And so we, you go to the code and the statutes and the rules, and you find the answer. It's there. A lot of people haven't been that versed in it to know even where to start, and that's partly what I do. I put you on that trailhead. I give you the trailhead to go down. I'll even give you a pack of part of the bag you need, and that's what we're doing. We're packing the bag on the journey you're going to take. And we're doing that before you take that journey. And so here's some information. If it fits what you want, Dr. David E. Martin sounds like he's got some information. It certainly is the basic basis for moving things forward. He makes a good statement. I, I kind of like how he's straightforward about what you, we need to do something. He says, you need to do it. You need to step up, just like I do. He has this concise and clear way to speak on how he wants to see that done. So moving more, a moron here, moron. Moran, spelled better. A COVID-19 agenda exposed, Dr. E. Martin. The COVID vaccine is a gene therapy, not a va not a vaccine, uh, through another link and vision launch. And this is just the other statement. This is not a vaccine. And so when you start to put this together, you realize they're not offering you something that is to cure the problem. It's a mere treatment, and it's for mere symptoms, and then it's worse than that. It's gene. I don't even know if it's therapy, because it's not therapy for anything, any actual illness. So all these words are very interesting. I would agree with it's not a vaccine, but I don't know if I'd go as far to say it's therapy. It's gene manipulation, it looks like to me. And they're not telling us it's not. And so, again, I don't know what more to say. The headlines tell me a ton. We just go ahead and throw it. I want to just throw out my part of this so that you don't get lost in embracing even anybody who might sound like they're in our, uh, on the side of protecting uh, us and wanting to protect us. We all have it a little bit wrong. And that little, I'm telling, I'm, I'll tell you that little bit wrong can send you way wrong. It's like when you, like you get an airplane and you had, you were a half a degree off, a quarter of a degree off, and you never correct for that, and you go any distance, you're not getting to your destination. 
And so you have to always correct. It's an ongoing thing. It's almost like a law of nature. You have to be on the target, and you have to stay on that target. And you have to compensate all along the way that you're going. And you're going to have to compensate. And so even, even amongst people that would be speaking to help to under us understand, let's understand we have to get our own vocabulary better to the more better reality. I don't even think this is a therapy because there's no underlying thing that it's doing. It has a plan. It's a weapon. It's not a therapy. And anyway, so without semantics, we have to get serious on what, what we're up against. I think I've been pretty accurate on all this for a guy, just a guy behind a woodshed. Then a couple of you know how little view I have behind a woodshed. But I still see, I think, pretty broadly what's been happening. It has nothing to do with what you're being told. It has to do with everything they're telling you on their plan that's already written. So alternatively, too, and so we're not having no alternatives behind the woodshed. This is how they, they're taking you down by offering you alternatives to different ways of life and, lives and philosophy. We're going to touch a little bit about little bit on that relative to what's rolled up on us. Uh, but we can go otherwise if it's only about symptoms. Now we're seeing more more official response from representatives, in, at least in another country. Conservative PM calls for the nationwide rollout of vitamin D tablets. Conservative bench backbencher Dave, David Davis MP has called for the UK government to distribute vitamin D supplementation to societies most at risk of COVID-19. Let me just end right there. Uh, everybody's at risk, likely because you're all likely vitamin D deficient and or you don't have a system that's absorbing it in a way that your body's actually using it. Go research that. Vitamin D is one of the central, they call it a vitamin. It's, I think it's actually a hormone. If I'm mistaken, fix that for me. It, it's a real important vitamin because it's like a catalyst. It's like a platinum in your system. It doesn't, it, it causes change. It helps cause change and it continues to cause those changes that help aid you. And I'm not sure, but I was thinking, I wish I didn't collect up this information. Things come through. I'm looking for one thing and other things come through apparent to me. And I'm not sure if one of those things, and this was vitamin D and, and uh, amino acid lysine, that may actually help to regulate blood sugar. And this, and so diabetes, is the importance of that here is, is when you start t- tying this together, what this gene war weapon does is it interferes with these systems. And this becomes critical when you start tying this together, because if you're dealing with an insulin or a blood sugar regulating system in the body, you start to understand when I get to the tab later on here in the broadcast, it's a little bit here down the road, why they just removed all the, what Trump tried to put in to cheapen the price for insulin, why Biden took it away. You, you see, you can see this guy in the, in the office wants to kill you. He wants to, if he doesn't want to kill you, he wants to maim you. And I've talked about this over and over again. Lots of people have. I, I, but I, in a way, I guess I'm, I'm feeling I'm a little bit different. I'm telling you that this is there and that you can use that information and you need to use it. Not to say, oh, I'm going to go fortify you, vitamin D. That These people are trying to kill you. It doesn't look like it. You don't have a gun in your face. Their troops aren't actually at your door and down your street, but they are. They're sending long-distance bioweapons on you. And they keep you from your body being able to do anything. They don't tell you what they can do. Well, conservative PM, I don't know why it's, me- why it import- why it's important that a conservative PM says this. Everybody is going is being affected. This is a glow. I can't believe how this works out. It's global, this attack. So I'm agreeable that because even on the, just regardless of the, all the science, if, not if, given, this is a fact. Given, because it's stated by the other side, if you will, the those that want to impose upon you their pharmacological, their pharmacological products for profit. These profiteers, these brokers of profiteers, they don't want to tell you what you might be able to do for yourself. And if this this gene weapon is actually only for symptoms, actually gives you the symptoms. <laughs> on top of that, I can do that better with the Nyquil, and better than that, I can actually do it better in what I think I can do better. In nutrition, and I'm speaking from my experience, for me, it's not just about taking vitamin D. I've told you this before, but we have an official saying, go take your vitamin D. Give it to the, the most, the most uh, vulnerable among us, using that language, the sustainable language. You're all vulnerable, folks. You're all being taken down. So moving on here, i got to keep, I can't get lost in all this stuff. A lot of, I, have a lot, I always have a lot to cover. I'm just here skipping along like a rock on, a, on the ocean and hoping that someone will 
pick up on this information and make it and go deeper with it. I, the deep, the things I go deep on are other than the surface I do here, but they're all because of all this. I say that uh, what I do. We're trying to. I'm trying to find people that will attack this in a more substantial way. Some of you stepped up, so we're going through the process. But now we have the reason why you understand if vitamin C, D is not being in, done, and, and if what I remember, it's just a brief. I have to go back and look at my tabs from a previous uh, study. Vitamin D and lysine, and there's a couple other things that work on the system that regulates blood sugar, which would keep you from having to have insulin. You see, that now when they don't tell you about vitamin D and they want to attack your immune system, then Biden comes along and freezes the implementation of the Trump, Trump administrative rule discounting insulin prices for low American, low-income Americans. Okay, so this is a direct attack on so-called low-income Americans. You're all going to become low-income real soon here, but it doesn't matter. We look at, we think it's the other guy. We think it's the other guy. The Biden administration has placed a freeze. Understand, he didn't undo. He put a freeze, an administrative freeze, on the implementing Department of Health and Human Services regulatory rule put in place under D President Donald Trump that requires community health, health centers to charge low-income patients the acquisition price for insulin and EpiPens. Okay, I, I don't know if I, I get I get frustrated reading this stuff. This because it's these are attacking you and I hear nobody responding. It's like, okay, if I hear nobody responding, what am I here for? Those of you that are in the choir think you are think you are. I say think you are because you're not really taking action. Some of you are, can take action, but you've you know, you've been beat up like I have been, but you've decided to back off and I understand that. But this is it, folks. I don't know what to say more. They are hitting us in such ways. This is war. And I told you they were coming. To so it's like soft war. And we were going to be eaten for, out from the inside, like we've been told we would anyway. But this is now ex the external threat becoming domestic from inside in people like a so-called president. And so your EpiPens, your, resp your immune response, you understand this. Your immune response to their back, your their, see, I almost made the mistake, to their gene weapon is going to be taken from those who can't afford it. Cannot, and that those gene weapons are somewhat looking like they're targeted on those very same people as a class. Not, not everybody in those classes are poor. But for the most part, that's true. And so you see the President of the United States is actually attacking those that are most vulnerable, under a claim that you're supposed to protect the most vulnerable. So don't miss how they're doing this. And this is going to be coming to your house because it'll slowly, you are slowly, I told you this is going to be a long-term deflation of your life. They can't make it faster. That's under international law. They don't want to, they don't want to piss off the natives. I wish you would finally see that. Now, I don't mean to violence. I'm saying start to understand what I've been saying on how to move this forward to establish yourself where you may have to do, be subject to your declaration of independence. Because the beginning process of, of uh, interposition is peaceful. And if you maintain the peaceful position, the non-aggressive position, those that speak about the non-aggression principle, you have to start that process. And when you can't, and you go through the stop process, and I think it's about four steps, then you are under attack. You're not even instigating it. And so you are going to be in the, you may not win, but you're going to be in the right side of that ethics, if you will, that morality. Anyway, so here's a direct attack. Donald Trump, for whatever faults he may have had or didn't have, he says, okay, the low, at least, the, I don't know why not everybody, folks. This is the other thing I didn't like about this, but it doesn't matter. The low-income people in this country will benefit by not paying more than anybody in India, let's say. And you'll be buying from the people that supply India the same standard of medicine or whatever here, and you're going to give it at that price. Seemed to be pretty reasonable. We should have been leading that, don't you think? Well, that should tell you something that we weren't, because this is a corporation. Don't get lost in this. On Oh, it's a corporation. No, this is a business, and they look out for the business of doing business. Richard Pryor had something to say about that. And so, as a comedian, he probably would have made the joke about Fauci today. But anyway, they're taking away and attacking this. This they're taking away your defenses against the the need or the uh, cause and effect of a gene weapon. 
Uh, Biden just did that. So he's not helping anybody underneath his kumbaya unity. The unity is if you don't agree with us and how we do things, you're out. You're dead. You're maimed. You're done. You're, you're going to be imprisoned. And I've been telling you this is here, coming, and it's here. You've been in it. You've been in it when they went to 9-11. And boy, oh boy, I just don't get it. I, I just start to lose the, the ability to speak anymore about, will anybody do something? And when you've tried to, you find out that we're really under, we are dumbed down. And yet, it's right there to, as I point out to people, here, you have a question? Let's go. Here's the, here, you didn't know to go here. Here, I'll show you where you should have been. There you are. Now let's, now that you see how this works, then all of a sudden people start saying, oh, that's how it works. And they start pulling out what they want, what they need. And I'm sitting there then perfectly in the right position where I can kind of look over anyone's shoulder when they're on their, when they finally get on the path and on their own motivations and stuff. Their motivation is what drives it. I just keep making sure that this, I kind of feel like I'm, uh, figuratively, the woman in the fort loading the guns that you, the sniper, trying to take out your enemy, is using the gun you're using to stop your enemy at invading the fort. I'm the woman handing you the, the loaded weapon to go do that in my capacity. You're the one that needs it. You're the one that's shown shown that you are do, willing to do it and starting to be capable and I'm more than willing then at that point not to shoulder your burden, not to set the gun up and take the shot. I'm going to hand you whatever I can possibly hand you to make you successful. No, you're up against a foe that's pretty broad, but notwithstanding that, I don't, again, I mean, do you just give up? Can, that's a possibility. And, the, and then collaterally, you have other remedies. Like I say, you start your process of interposition to bring out the, start the peaceful process to show that peace is futile. And then when you get to the point, you find in history, you're not the one doing the attacking. You're attacked, and you're going to have to defend yourself. But you can't wait. I'm going to use my Second Amendment. You can't wait till then and then start it up then. You have to start the process. Otherwise, you're, going to, you'll be, you're, be, you're being called that now. The domestic terrorist, as I told you, was shown in 9-11, now ramped up and tightened down. Everyone is afraid of, ahead of the open. Uh, we're going to move into a remedy to some of this stuff, but I think it's a... It's being thrown up to us in the wrong way that we should be able to use and leverage it for our own needs. We've been saying this to do this for years, and I'm sure I'm not sure. I think Grimner was on this. I think anybody that gets into sound money type ideas and you understand what the specie is in the Constitution and why you actually should be minting specie and not dealing with these fiat currencies, there's something going through that I don't have any time to research, but it, so I, I'm going to talk completely outside the understanding, but it focused me on something about it. Everyone is afra- afraid ahead of open, of the open. Uh, this had to do with the Reddit Raiders sparking a national-wide physical sh- a silver shortage plan. Apparently, there's some stuff going on where something through ed- re- Reddit is actually having sending reverberations through your, your uh, House of Cards Wall Street. Uh, relative to this, uh, how to how to interfere with this fiat system, this derivative system, this paper system, and this issue was very interesting to me. Although I don't have any time, but I wanted to just touch it. To counts one of the counters, like vitamin D and being healthy, is to bring yourself into financial health of some sort. And it, I don't know if it's a total answer, but it's a hedge, I guess, for yourself locally. This happens to be working paper. To then you make it apparently, and I'm not, this is not advice, this is nothing more than my conjecture, to try and get you to do something for yourself locally. But I don't even know if this is the right way to go. It may take some time. There's some things that they're not talking about here that I, I've been told goes on about this relative to the delivery they're going to demand. But it's an interesting thing that I want to take the next step. Instead of using it just to out J.D. Morgan or J.P. Morgan, you need to understand that you're going to have to have this specie, this representation closer to specie, if it's bullion, in your hands as we move into this Weimar condition that's coming, if we're not already here. That what this was was investing apparently in the silver market paper and then demanding delivery on the contract to short the supplies, which are known to not be there physically. And to out and expound, expound on how uh, how the system is being supported by a false representation, a fraud. Now, here's the problem. 
I think it's being held one short. The stepping here is one step short of what you need to understand, I think. They want you to do that to go after this fraudulent system. The system may be collapsing around your ears anyway. These people aren't going to be outed. They'll be protected. What you need is something physical anyway. You should be taking delivery for your own sake. You should be. You have a double step to do here. You need to bring something you can trade as a medium of exchange locally. As they start taking us out of our food production and things we get to buy by the big chain stores because it's planned to go green and you will live under austerity and the price will be going up and everything, you're going to need to have something more tangible with you. I think this is an interesting way to get us back to what we've talked about since I've been broadcasting. Get into silver and gold, local coin that you do hand-to-hand. Get back engaged with people. They've used COVID to try and separate you. You will still have to do things locally, and you will still have to exchange things. Now, if you could do it on barter, I wouldn't call it barter because that's what they tax that. You have to find some private contract is what you have to kind of go to here. And I've talked about all this years and years ago. So far, I don't even remember all I've said. This little nationwide civil, physical silver shortage expo- exposure potential, I think, is indicative of what is a short. It's a shorting you, actually. This is shorting you. This is why I don't like this. It's interesting, but it's shorting you on what you need to do. If you fall into this and don't take the next step to hold that silver for you, not to just hold it out of the market, but hold it for you locally, those of you that can. I'm totally blown out of this. There's no way I'm going to be able to go do any of this. Okay, This is where I, I decided to do way back, way, way back. I realized they were thieving us, and I just stepped back from the whole thing. And so I'm not, maybe that wasn't so smart. Some of you are a lot more intelligent than me. So you may find that this is a way to get at least demand delivery. Whether you get it or not is going to be interesting. But demand delivery to do what they say. But you want this this money, this silver, in your possession as they move through. This is now the time you can, your risk assessment against the inflation and the lack of ability to pay for stuff is extreme now if it wasn't 10 years ago. And I did see something quickly in the RLM chat. Uh, Grimner says, uh, I see you, am I? This was for you. Those, w- These work real well. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, I, I didn't look ahead. Uh, Grimner is offering in the RLM chat. You can get to the website at reallibertymedia.com, get into the chat, and uh, maybe ask for this again. But he's got uh, Now Foods Vitamin D3, 2000 IU potential vitamin D. So he's offering you the vitamin D. It's And I, I've just been looking around. Now seems to be the brand that's pretty good. And uh, anyway, so yes, fortify. It's not just vitamin D, though, folks. It, vitamin D help works with the calcium that you need. I'm finding out that lysine was important, amino acid. Look, I work with with our biological systems. I don't work with vitamin supplements on their own. I've all and I've done this with herbs, just to let you know. Don't I would uh, suggest not snipe. Don't be the sniper on vitamin supplementation. Look at holi- if you can call it, if I can call it holistic supplementation you want to fortify complete body systems operating systems and that takes more than one or two vitamins it's a little bit it gets a little bit involved it's amazing what our body does naturally all by itself it's just phenomenal and 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 yet that system's there to fortify because as i just recently ran across i think it was is i think it's potassium i was astonished i don't know if you know this they're claiming it takes 4700 milligrams 4.7 grams of potassium a day to be normal you, you, you go your body goes right through that and i looked at that i said i don't even i can't eat that much food i can't eat i can't i've looked at it, i can't do it how we're doing that i don't know but if you're not getting that then you're deficient because that potassium also feeds into this vitamin d thing it, it also ends up going through the liver and it goes through the through the kidneys and all this other stuff your organs are being you're neutrifying your organs this way. And it appears that our society is absolutely deficient. And anyway, don't want to get too off. Uh, uh, this is a little bit more involved. When you have to start managing your stuff because the system out there, the corporate system, profit system, is stealing from you without your knowledge, the very essences of what makes your life normal and healthy. It's a lot. It starts to become a lot more work. In fact, that's what I, there's so much going on trying to keep up with all this stuff just to keep on par is it is been becoming a lot more demanding. As I just look up really quickly, 
the Grimner saying yeah, eat lots of eggs, that's where you have lecithin. Lecithin's another thing you have to put in on this. That makes the lipids work better. See, all this stuff is integrated. And then he points out that a banana, banana has 422 milligrams. That depends on the size of the banana of potassium. And, and yeah, you got to, how many bananas do you have to eat in a day, every day, to match up to 4.7 grams? You got to eat 10 bananas every day. And that's bananas. That's a high level, one of the higher levels of food. And so uh, it's a little bit more difficult to try and match these things. And I say, and I've looked at all this stuff, the suggested numbers are way low than what you actually need. When you looked at, if I, when you just heard me say, and I'm cut off on here with nutrition a bit, when you look at what Grimner said about the, the milligram, the IUs of the tablet, 2000 IUs, that's way, way above what the FDA, F, FRA, uh, uh, the, the standard is. Right? Way above. And so, and you got, and that's what you have to start taking, is you have to look at this systemically, find out what your body is known to draw. Be careful on the studies that say stuff is in your blood. Sometimes, if it's supposed to be in an organ and it's in your blood, it's not helping you. You're, that's the wrong nutrient, or you have a, an assimilation problem. You have to study all for this. And, and these, dis, these imbalances are created by your food system. These imbalances are created even if you're paying attention and you eat uh, veg, uh, um, or call it organic. I hate that word, but because it means you got you can eat five percent poison. But anyway, you know, naturally more or, or, more gr more wholesomely grown food. You still have to look at your soil. If you're not knowing how to keep your soil nutrition up, it's not in the plants either. And so it's a big. It can be a, a lot of work. And this is where we may have to go. We may have to go back in and help each other relearn how all this stuff works. I'm just kind of far off the tabs. I'm actually anticipating something else. But the silver shortage, I would ask you all, if you have any way to do this, go study it very carefully. If you want to do it, don't do it just to say, oh, I'm going to get it J.P. Morgan, because I don't know if that's actually going to happen. Do it to use it as an excuse to get silver into your pockets at home and hold on to it. The long, drawn-out austerity is going to be longer than any good prepper I know is prepared. I've talked to you about all this. You're prepared for three to five years if you could be that far. You got 15 year food. It ain't going to last for as long as they're going to push this on. You're going to have to figure out how to continue. You're going to have to be self reliant. And that's going to take getting to get back together despite COVID, getting back together with people. And bullion may be imperfect. It may not be a coin. There may be a problem with the. Uh, you know, counterfeiting the this, this silver metal. There's there's technology now that's not too expensive that you can use to keep everybody honest. Yes, people are going to rip you off. You got to be there too. You're no one's the uh, brotherhood of man. Kind of went down the toilet a long time ago when Cain killed Abel. So let's not let's not kind of turn a blind eye to the reality of that. Point is, you have to. I think this is a good thing. I've spent a little bit too much time. Get the silver now. Whatever this is, forget the game. Look at what you need now. Don't focus on what their object of what someone suggested to you. Use it as an impetus if you have to, to do something local to you. Mediums of exchange that you can trust and people trust in you are going to be required, as I can see this. And if even if it's drug out a little farther, it doesn't look like it. Um, folks, it's it's coming. It's I don't know. The, the writing is so much happening what Biden, I told you, was going to do and turn on the switch of the machine that was sitting there idling. And what they're doing now is almost terrifying. And so let me go step one more time back here in a time before. Uh, I wanted to mention this a couple weeks ago. I never got to it, but I think it's so important because it, it talks to what's coming on us, who the people are that are bringing this on. They can be identified by what they do. You know them when you see them. Lieber code. First article. They don't have to tell you that they're invading you and that they're they're taking over and they've taken over. You just know them by when you see them. And when you saw your courts go down and you saw your e-government e, e step in and you couldn't access all the instrumentalities of the government for whatever you think they are, when you couldn't get at remedy, you had lost your country then. Here, QAnon, I know, don't get lost on this. We're looking at looking at who who this might be behind because this is telegraphing who actually is running the switches now. And these people, these figureheads that come out in front of you that call themselves officials and office of the president and all these so-called high-sounding 
criminals is what they end up being. QAnon bears striking a resemblance to Bolshevik PSYOP from the 1920s known as Operation Trust. I want you to see this in the broadcaster. Get the link. You need to read. I can't read all the fine print in the picture. It goes through explaining from a discussion what this operation was that was a Bolshevik counterintelligence operation run from 1921 to 1926 aimed at neutralizing opposition by creating the false impression that a powerful group of military leaders had organized to stop the communist takeover. This is not just about the military leaders taking over. Uh, this is also about the false impression you get about who's running the show and you don't think that they're already taken over. This is very important to read how in the past it's already happened what you're watching today. Now, if we just go to the point about is it resembles the Bolshevik PSYOP, well, let's move in and let's just accept that for the moment. Who, who were the Bolsheviks? You can read all this. Some of you know better than I. I don't even really study this stuff. I just know it's something I put in the category that it's not something I support and will support. When that character shows up in the room, we have a problem. And I better be able to figure out in this civilized society how I'm going to neutralize that for me and hope, likely for others because this is an attack on everybody. And now I'm speaking to, kind of extending quickly to, this ends up going to into what we see today as non-governmental organizations. This comes into those that advance these things like sustainable development. So getting back to what this Bolshe Bolsheviks were, a radical far left and the Mar revolutionary Marxist faction founded by Vladimir Lenin and Alex Alexander Boganov that split from the Menshevik faction of the Marxist Russian Social Democratic Labor Party, a revolutionary socialist political party formed in 1898, Zionism, 1898, as its second party congress in 1903. All these types of groups started up, you'll find out, in the late 1800s, as I interjected one on top of this as well. Remember, this is set up in 1898. In 1917, you have the revolution from these people that overthrows and brutally kills a family and a king. Now, whatever you agree, disagree or agree about a king or whatever, sometimes organization and figurehead can help people. In fact, organization is usually really good for people. At any rate, so not going through the whole ta just focusing on who Bolsheviks were running an operation to do a counter, to get people to come in and set up a counter op in order to get them off point and also become aiding them is the point here. They were of a revolutionary Marxist faction. That's not the republic if you can keep it. Vine's telling me in the RLM as I look past my screen. Uh, all that started in the pulpits of the 1850s, uh, preparing for acceptance for Zionism. And yes, there's a ton of encroachment happening in those times. And I'll add the Bar Association was all in there at the same time. About the 40s, they were there moving their agenda across. You can just watch it. And the Bar Association actually helps to aid other bankruptcies, if you will, dis economic disasters, as they move from New York across the country in more organized fashions. So yes, these people have been around. Multiple types of people, all doing the same end. And so that becomes overwhelming at some point. And that's why I say, I'm not that capable. I get overwhelmed. And I've had to take stock of my weakness there. And I think lots of people are like this. It partly helps the apathy be apathetic, because you could just use the excuse it's overwhelming. And it is. I just stick it all in one basket. If it looks like a duck, quacks like a duck, and lays, a lays eggs and swims around the pond, I'm going to call it and treat it like a duck. Well, if that thing that looks like a duck has two legs just like a duck, but it's walking around and land land and doesn't re it only makes it look like it lay eggs, maybe I've got an imposter. Maybe I better be careful. And this is what I, I when they, indeed, folks, when I see someone act, I qualify whether that was intentional or just ignorance. And if it's not ignorance, you better be careful. And you better game up real fast. And you don't tell them that that's what's going on. You'll never attack these people head on. You're going to find that as somebody did that here right after the 
cancel culture got a hold of this place. But John Kerry is determined to be the senior version of Greta Thunberg, the former U.S. Secretary, as we move on to these Marxists moving in this agenda, Soviet Marxist communitarianism. I don't care what you put the, the name on it. It's nothing what anybody actually understands. It is going to be what it is, and it's destroying you right now, and I hear crickets. But John Kerry, he's back, folks. All these people are back. Uh, determined to be senior version of Greta Thunberg is all you really need to know. Greta didn't go away. COVID was a political uh, uh, political, uh, political maneuver. Climate change is a political maneuver, and you're buying it. Even in your obstruction, your rejection of it, you're buying it because you're not stepping in and trying to stop it. One attempt I tried, it's on the record, party of a lawsuit, 2013, suing unsustainable development against the governor and the Bar Association and the political parties, left and right, whatever you want to call them, marching on your face. And we showed them that in their default judgment, they would not answer to the case, that they were committing treason. And so I have a flag marker for whatever anybody wants to see in that, have the eyes to see what they've done there. It disappeared from the record for a long time and came back with an altered record. The point is, I did what I could do through Jefferson Mining District and the and the assembly of Just Jefferson Mining District and everybody that we were, were doing the research. Then we put forward in a complaint, and they this system, these people could not answer. These very same people could not answer. That's a default, folks. That's a default judgment. Whether or not the system will want to recognize its crimes is not the point that you recognize their crimes and there in the in the seat of your decision of your life is the problem what i've been asking you to step up with that problem that fraud it's an ongoing fraud and doing some research and answering to a completely frivolous in a way it's frivolous serious is a heart attack but frivolous uh, response by a court decision and dismissal looking into fraud and its importance it's there, folks. It's there to be regarded absolutely up front. You don't even get to go to square one in the face of a fraud in a court case. And yet you have judges that allow it to speak in their court and advance it. Isn't justice, can't be justice, and can't expect to give you justice, just like some of you in the chat and some of you listening to me have found over history and been beat up. Why? You know that. I know that. And so we now have, on a more focused point, the ability to call out, what have I told you, told you last week? This interposition concept that you see the Declaration of Independence is. It's required. I don't know if people want to get this. It's not my rule. It's required that you establish the futility of something. Otherwise, the system has given to itself license to be okay. It has the prerogative. You have to strip that prerogative from them. You can't do it complaining on your keyboard, sitting back and doing nothing else. Anyway, I don't know. I get real. My body gets real little. I just got real energy. All the energy just left my body right there. I'll just tell you. It's like, wow. You know, people don't really understand. They think they do. We're not, we're not doing it. This thing is, part of me wants to say it's over. And yet, Again, there's a there's an alter, apparently an uh, an ultimate optimist in me that says no, it is it's it's the la the next it, the next man or woman just doing something that, and their luck is better than the one I have in my life for sure. But Kerry, John Kerry, he's coming back. He wants to be he's working to be the senior version of Greta Thunberg. Is what I told you was coming. Sustainable development, climate change is on the move. Okay, this guy Biden means you no good. One of the attacks. Uh, is against carbon. I don't want to go through the whole point. This becomes the underpinning. Instead of COVID now, it becomes the underpinning of moving forward and championing the so-called existential existential threat. I want to touch a little bit about that in a moment. But uh, someone sent me an email. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for the link uh, to this. And on the subject header, I think it said, Hold him a door by executive order. Thank, thank you very much. Exactly. Because it speaks directly, gen, gentleman on a video, the gentleman at Ice Age Farmer, who is that account, I think his name is Christian, uh, someone I've talked to through his 
he had a problem in, uh, in, in Australia. I've talked to that. I've gave them a suggestion. Never heard back. It's okay. Seems like a great enough guy. He does, in this case, the link sent to me, thank you very much, underneath the subject heading, Hola Mador, by executive order, is perfect. Thank you very much for that acknowledgement of the famine that's coming on us. And I call it the medical Hola Mador in that COVID would, was used to spring upon us. You're a lifestyle family. The necessity of your life famine, the famine that's coming across every aspect of what you need, as we were told was showing, as what they said they were going to come and do, uh, the the link will go to an, a, a YouTube still up at this point. Uh, Biden attacks farms, comprehensive war on global food supply, engineered famine. So I want you to see. If I, I hope I, I hope I didn't. Ins- I think his name is Christian. He uh, does a great job pulling together a summary of everything you've been watching. Not everything, the highlights of the last ten or so years, fifteen years. Of all the things that you've watched and said and shown and things I've talked about, he summarizes in one little broadcast here of 30 minutes. I, I think even the first 10 minutes or 15 minutes is probably relative to what I, I'm more focused on here. And he does a great job bringing to you new stuff that steps and builds on the old stuff and how it interrelates to essentially take the interdynamic, I think you're going to find amazing here, couple things that I'm not necessarily focused on, but he found out himself because he's focused on this, uh, where he shows and he comes right out to tell you that the attack on our food supply comes in multifaceted attack. As they shut down farms, as they, I don't know if you knew this, I didn't understand. Fertilizer is always in shortage all over history, but in particular, it's being manipulated into shortage and a dynamic that causes further shortage. That there's going, there's a coming fertilizer shortage for food, uh, selling out stocks that we had in reserve, and cutting off imports to the United States relative to just the United States is building uh, this perfect storm. It's causing a perfect storm. He, I think he speaks very great, uh, very well to consolidate all this information for you. I think the most important thing that impacted me was. When he, do- he pulled together all these disparate points to show you this is the plan. This is how they're taking you down. It's not obvious. It, it's how they attack the fuel. It's, how the, it's why they attack the meat. It's how he even tells you that your bo- big box stores like Walmart is in on it. You're going to be eating a veggie burger because they're not going to be supplying you a meat burger. That's all part of the agenda. These big corporations are going to kill you, help to kill you, help to weaken you. And if you do, and okay, so let me get to the other thing before I forget it. I didn't go look. You need to go see. He offered a seminar or something, right? He talked about it right in the beginning of the video. I didn't go see it. Maybe you, I want. I'm going to say you should go see it. He's trying to offer a suggestion that you all start helping yourself locally right now. Start getting the counter, the alternative food supplies that you can amongst all your all your friends, all your neighbors, your farmers around you, start making the contacts that you need to counter the starvation of you in certain food things. Now, this is difficult in, when you get north, more northerly. However, that's just you have to you have to prepare more. Uh, eat your eat your dang insects and be happy, Grimner. Yes, absolutely. The, the crickets, folks. You're gonna you crit you cr- you might might inactive listeners. My contented listeners, you will be the flower for the bread, the staff of life they kill you with. You will be feeding the rest, Soylent Lee. Anyway, getting back to uh, to this, I I was a uh, uh, I don't know what the, I don't know what the adjective is. He did a good job in this, at least maybe the first half of this for this particular aspect, tying a bunch of stuff together. So. Highly recommend it, this, uh, this, and thank you to the emailer for that. Again, I don't get out. If, if you, if folks who don't send me stuff, I sometimes will miss it completely. However, I'm fascinated how it works together each week to bring stuff together together. We're going to have to come up with our independent answer to this locally. Become local, local, become active local. This really has been the answer. Uh, all the time I, I mean, this has been before I even started broadcasting what the answer was, why I appreciated and why we found uh, camaraderie, if you will, the with uh, William Roberts. It was just the the answer. This is what you come to. It was that we were looking at the same stinking abyss, and we came down totally different paths to get there to see it. 
That's a witness on its own, that fact. And so, here we are. Biden vows to pay. Okay, so one of the information, two of the information I want to highlight within what Christian did, uh, st points out, was that Biden vows to pay farmers to plant cover crops and put the land into conservation. You need to see that this has actually happened. This is the President of the United States putting into conservation easements, and I think this is going to be worse than what he's even saying, Christian's even talking to, and I don't, he may go into it more later somewhere, I don't know. Conser if they put this stuff in conservation easements, they've now tied your pro private property up. And they got you to do it, they got you to pull the trigger to the gun that they, you pointed to your own head about your private property. Because usually this money comes with an, another attachment. Anyway, the government will help farmers, help farmers mitigate climate change. Has nothing to do with food, has nothing to do with your health, has nothing to do with the economy, has nothing to do with supplying you with the things of your, your needs. It has to do with dealing with a, well, the, you'll hear that Biden doesn't say it's pie in the sky solutions. It, no, it's a, a fluffy pink unicorn dancing on rainbows, those unity rainbows you're yet to see bringing peace across the land is what they're doing here. No, it's not pie in the sky. He says it's not pie in the sky. I, I agree. It's a pu fluffy pink unicorn dancing on a rainbow, a unity rainbow no less, that they're putting because of a fraud, a political fraud, climate change, putting land into conservation and the plant cover crops, which I find it, it's kind of an oxymoron, non-usable cover crop. Crop is what you usually sell. All right, eventually. So if they did that, if they did it for the bees, that might be cool. Go ahead and lay the ground fallow, folks. The point is, this is a bribe. It wasn't done by the farmer's own indication. And they're going to lay crop 30% of the productive land or try to into bribes to pay people or to, to pay them subsidy, I can't remember the word, uh, to not grow food for you. That's a bribe. And if I understand correctly, though, I don't. I haven't talked. I don't talk with Grammy Mary. Uh, flashed in my mind. I think she mentioned a few times back, talking about farmers in Kansas do take these subsidies. And I got the impression they weren't well. Well, people, the farmers like it, but it wasn't well, actually well taken. Anyway, whatever all that is, farmers people will take money to not grow food. Now, in facing when you have shortages of food. Does that make any sense? And this guy is wanting to move this for climate change, not your food supply, for a political attack that he wants to help promote. He vows to pay farmers to plant cover crops. Now, that brought up something else, which maybe you all thought about it before I did. Because there was a story back that everyone was talking about, and I admit, I just didn't cover it. I don't. It doesn't matter to me that someone buys property. It really doesn't. It doesn't matter to me that they own most of it. The federal government owns the most, and no one wants to talk about it. They have disregarded their trust obligation to dispose all that land to all y'all. Uh, no one talks about it. So some man buying the most property in the country, oh, uh, well, okay, good for him. Besides, Bill Gates owning 242,000 acres of farmland on its face, it's such. It's not even a drop in the bucket. It, it doesn't even make moisture on the container relative to the amount of land that's out there. Now, farmland is kind of special land, and it's not everywhere, granted. But 242,000 acres, it's a lot. It's the most that anybody owns. And I said, well, that's not, okay, fine. Yeah, you can look at why he might want to do that. Oh, he wants to grow GMO crops. He wants to feed his system. Well, he couldn't produce enough. Folks. I mean, when you look at the, what this country, the bountiful country this is, he can't produce anything on that. It has nothing to do with that. So I was not a, that was not a story. But don't you, let's go back to that other story. Biden, Biden vows to pay farmers to plant cover crops. You think just maybe. Oh, it was a good investment to be buying in a bunch of so-called farmland. You never were going to, you never were going to farm anyway. To claim you have cover crops. In order to get the subsidy. And that this was really just a tax write-off for him. This is just a credit to him. This is just a way to make more money like he does profit everything else. And maybe you should quit whining and go do what he just done. Based in the way and the direction they're trying to kill you. Now, Bill Gates owning 242000 made all the sense in the world that he's done this because of that subsidy coming. And the point about that is he knew it. And the point about that is he declared this before it was said that they were going to pay for these subsidies to farmers to not plant. Telling me this guy is in with Biden. He's in. If, okay, the choir says, yeah, we know that. I'm telling you there's a mechanism and a plan working. So far ahead of us, 
that we're just now on the uptake after we see it, and we complain about Bill Gates, and we get on the, this thought about Bill Gates, what are you going to do to us in the GMOs, or whatever the heck we thought about that, or you did, I didn't. No, this is strictly about how you do tax write-offs, how you make money, how you make profit, and this guy's ahead of the curve, and you didn't know anything about it. Now you're whining. The point is, there's a plan, and it's, it's implementing what I told you was being implemented. COVID was going to get us into the next phase. It's to implement climate change, which is a political attack on your system. I've got a default judgment to prove it's treason. And I've got a default judgment of the political parties. You call them rhinos on the, on the Republicans, and you call them the Democrats or on the Democrats. They're both the same. That's how you can see the Republic died quite a long time ago. You see it in the Bar Association, running your whole judicial, judicial branch. I've done a study and did a writing back in 1999 explaining the Oprah overthrow. There's so many levels of the occupation. It's I, I, Can I say it's funny that no one noticed it? At any rate, moving to this. I think I see now, I shouldn't even talk about it more, Gates bought this land so he could probably, I don't know, uh, this has just made sense to me now. He bought the land so he has 242,000 some odd acres he can put into subsidy, right, from a check to be paid to not work. Fascinating. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. And you all complain about that in the corporation. Well, they don't pay no taxes. Yeah, well, go look. If you're going to be a taxpayer, why don't you go look at how to best the system? That's what those people do. Another thing that... Uh, Christian at uh, Ice Age Farmer points out, again, I got this link from him through the, uh, I had to track it down. He didn't provide it, I don't think, in the uh, links. I couldn't see it, but I tracked it down. Biden administration suspends, at the same time they're going to pay to not grow, they're going to suspend payments, the CFAP payments, to farmers that do grow. And he points out in this in the video, and I'll point you out to it, I've just given you a link so you can get to it quicker, that this the American Farm Bureau President, Zippy Duval, says AFPF recognizes the new administration's desire to review important programs, but he's urging the swift resumption of CFAP because it's a lifeline for farmers and ranchers across the country. There's your meat. There's your suppliers. Those are your producers being attacked. This is... I'll uh, advisedly, the words that use advisedly, legalize sabotage of your country. They're going after your meat as well, right here. The payments to the producers, the subsidies that they paid producers, are going to be cut while he pays them to not grow. It seems, in my mind, to be an easy decision if I'm a farmer all of a sudden. Yeah, where's the beef? That's what you're going to be asking. Actually, you know what? As I thought about, I may have misspoke. You're probably not going to say, where's the beef? Because what they're going to offer you is going to be so close, it'll be like what that guy in the in the Matrix. Oh, that, that virtual steak tastes so good. That's what's coming down. <laughs> At any rate, here. Okay, so they're, they're stop. You're watching a sabotage of your production. And uh, thank you to Christian at Ice Age Farmer. I did a pre and the, and the link email. I appreciate seeing this. Not that I can handle much of it. It just confirms what I've been telling you. They were going to turn this thing up. It's happening, folks. It's on. This Vilsack demon back in the USDA is not your friend. He comes out of, if I understand it, Mon Satan, folks. He's coming out of that. These people mean you no good. And you're going to have to start some. You're going to kind of, you're going to come to terms with that, whether you come to the terms on your terms or whether they come to you on their terms. And we start to hear more of his focus. This guy came out and went, right, didn't come in and stop, didn't come in to stop your the lack of, didn't come in to stop the fraud of COVID, didn't stop the fraud of climate change, didn't stop the fraud, the, the bleeding off of the economy, didn't stop the, the downfall of the country. No, it goes directly to stave off the worst of climate change. In the this is what this this guy, the president, did. In the most ambitious U.S. effort to stave off for the worst of climate change. What is that for? Climate change is a political attack. He's not staving it off. He's actually bringing it on. In this world of topsy-turvy, upside-down, downside-right up, whatever, inside-out type doublespeak, you're watching it right here. As you all know about it, you're watching him put it on you. 
that Joe Biden signed executive orders Wednesday to transform the nation's heavily, heavily fossil fuel powered economy into a clean burning one, pausing oil and gas leasing on the federal law and targeting subsidies for those industries I reported last week, going to AP to remind you they're really after your energy. If you don't have energy in an energy world, you're dead. The directives aim to conserve 30% of the country's land. So in doing this and going after the fossil fuels, he's going after your food. And he's doing it underneath a green energy which can't happen. It cannot happen. Just do the math. You cannot replace the energy this world needs with green. It can't happen. You have a battery, you have to have a generator somewhere. You have to use actual reality to get that power built up. You're not going to do it out of a out of the power of a fluffy pink unicorn dancing on a rainbow. It ain't going to happen. It can't happen. So let's get out of that point. So in, in this, he's also bringing up these ideas that this climate change, he said his orders will supercharge our administration's ambitious plan to confront the existential threat of climate change. Now, I've always, they always get these big words. In fact, I saw somebody else, they come up with these big words that make it real scary. And it's really not much of anything, but it's actually telling you something if you went and looked. What's this thing, existential threat? Well, what's existentialism is kind of what you have to get at. Because guess what? When you go read what it, and it is, it starts to point you back to the Bolshevik, the theory that maybe this QAnon thing was a Bolshevik plot to undermine, bring people in and undermine them to support the actual thing that's against them. And those people never get attacked. The people that, that did the op never get attacked, never get stopped. So I went and did a quick check. You know, existential, these are done by, this is done by existentialists and isms. We're back to isms and is supporting. It's a, it's a philosophical movement, What's they use the word here for climate change. This is proving out exactly what I've told you before about the UN and all they do and all these things. This is their belief in a better world for you. They never asked you, but this is the do-gooder feeling great and, great and mighty in how they're going to take man and make man better. Not asking you. Existential is often used in relation to existentialism. It's actually it's the same part. Phil, a philosophical movement. Now, let's just stop right there. Biden is talking about imposing upon you a philosophical movement when imposing existential threats of climate change. The existential threat is the use of climate change against you by the existentialists. Learn how to read the news, folks. It's right here. If you don't think they're telling you, they're right there in your face. Santa Claus Genghis Khan Schwab is no good. He's one of these guys. Anyway, going on. The, the, a philosophical movement that suggests that existence, life, the universe, and everything has no meaning except for the meaning that individuals create for themselves. Existential is also often used to describe a scenario in which someone or some thing's very existence or being is threatened or in question, especially in phrases like existential threat. Who determines that? Folks, see, there's no basis for this anyway. But it's an ism and an ist. Biden is p professing a non-Republican form I ist or ism. And we, I can, I've already proven it's a, actually a political attack. I didn't prove it. I proved it by referencing their own words about it. That's what this guy, well, when I was reading what I was reading there, the philosophical movement that says you kind of, uh, the, the, about a meaning that the individuals create for themselves, uh, uh, do, do, un, do unto others kind of thing. Uh, do no harm, they call it, but when you look at it, do no harm that you consider and you could care less about the other. Uh, the word hedonism came up. And there's people way better involved with understanding all this stuff, and I'm probably wrong here. There's probably some other ism. The point is these are all philosophical ideas that are being imposed upon your republic as an alternative to the republic, and you've said, okay, You've actually felt comfortable and become crickets. The when hedonism first appeared, first appeared, folks. Not even the mind of man is involved here. The first appeared. Philosophical movement. In the middle of the 19th century. What are we talking about the 1880s, 1850s, 1840s? Folks. It, it referred, it was an overthrow happening there. It came in. 
can we uh, can we at least see that they would have the forces of that would have in 20 years started to help to start the civil war as well your current the other current occupation of your life the middle of the 19th century it referred to the doctrines of certain schools of philosophy another philosophy in ancient greece who held that the happiness of pleasure constituted the chief goal in life as used today the word frequently carries a judgmental tinge if someone is described as living life as a he of hedonism, the implication is that he or she derives happiness from debauchery rather than, say, spending quality time with family and forming meaningful relationships at work. Hedonism comes from the Greek hedon, pleasure. I guess a hedoni. We've got to pronounce those long vowels in this uh, Latin and stuff, don't we? Hedony, I forget these little rules sometimes. Pleasure, which also provides the root of the word an anhedonia, a, a psychological condition characterized by inability to experience pleasure in normally pleasurable acts. And then you want to know why we hear about all this other stuff, all this, this evil sounding stuff and this pedophilia and all these th people that think they're doing you good and don't think that's a harm and focus rather on a fiction than on the real thing that's going on. What I told you I found out in the child services stuff. And got and got caught up and got treated around that. And so, that's your life. Sitting right there, being hidden. So, anyway, getting back to existentialism, sounded like hedonism to me. That's what you're dealing with in Biden. That's what you're dealing with in Santa Claus, Genghis Khan, Schwab. That's what you're dealing in Davos. That's what you're dealing in United Nations. That's what you're dealing with. These are the people that you're dealing with that are advancing a weapon called climate change, advancing vaccines that are genetic weapons that are in control right now of your food systems through modernization. That's another thing you're going to see being spoken of all the time is this modernization principle, as I told you, was coming. They're modernizing your life. They're transforming it out of what you're have expected and what would have given you if you would have kept it the republic would have given you a continued stability because you didn't let man and his pleasure rule you over an objective black and white and then held those that were exalted at the position of deciding to the high standards of the objective basis they were to be called to and i say that because of the decision of the of a uh, so-called chancellor in an, a chancery court completely devoid of any law completely unsupportable and these are, these are the people that are running your life and until we have more people i be able to identify it all factually not as our, our our general knowing there's a corruption out there or those people are corrupt that's just like calling someone a name it won't stand in fact the more we do that the more we don't understand that we do that that's going to be used against you as i'm going to get to a story if i get there quickly how that happens to you real quick anymore in the cancel culture. But let me talk to you about something. Another word that you're gonna, you've been hearing, I've been really fascinated and about that we, see, we hear these words and don't think they mean something. I've heard Biden and I've heard lots of people around Biden and anybody else that's always been talking now of this thing coming on us, talking about non-governmental organizations being a part of this. Now, being part of the UN, that's a non-governmental organization is part and parcel an adherent to the UN, like the Bar Association is. But what I found interesting that I've taught, I've mentioned, I think, twice in all the time I broadcast, because I'm wondering if people really read what I tell them to read. Do they come up and do you apply what I'm showing you to read? It's right there, dictating to us what the future will be. And I'm now referring to a time back in the 1800s again. There was a law passed, and it says right in that law what would happen in the future. And I've pointed it out. And I point it to you out. I point out the statute over and over. It's about what your real civil rights are. And I just, when I pointed this out to Clint Richardson and I explained how you really read it, it blew. I just say it blew him away. I don't really remember his response, but you've seen how he's taken the truth of how you read that and turned it around to what he now does, as he now goes and he ferrets out all these inverted meanings in all the law because. This thing was done inside out and backwards, and you've brought up, bought onto, bought into something that was actually a tainted condition. What am I speaking about? I'm speaking to 
You heard the word non-governmental organizations, right? You heard about this condition of this. These have they have power to do things inside governments. They are not liable to government, but they do have a condition. And there was a 42 U.S.C. 1981. I've mentioned it a couple of times. You go down to C, and I want to read this to you. And I want you to have to. We're going to go through a little bit of a a, a little bit of an analysis here. As I've, what am I talking about? In your civil. What am I saying? Your civil rights. Oh, I got civil rights. What does that mean? I'm going to go hit it one more time, and I'm going to show you. Now we're going to introduce C that I've talked about a long time ago. I mentioned it a couple of times. I said we're going to talk about this in the future. You don't hear me talk about. It. We're going to talk about it today. What are your civil rights as defined in your federal code? This is the. Do I read from the top? If I read from the top, it'll confuse some people. You have the right to make and enforce contracts. Now, boy, see, there's a big analysis. Right to, I want you to consider that everything you do with the government is considered some form of a contract, but it's called an application. All right? And they're presumed upon you. So, read it. Read, you have to read this. If you've been listening to it for any time, you can quickly and readily invert what they're actually talking about as an imposition, not as a benefit. The benefit is the imposition. That's how they got this all twisted around. But anyway, to make and enforce contracts, to sue, be parties, give evidence. You have the right to remain silent, but you have the right to give evidence, folks. Here we go. And to the, to the full and equal benefit of all laws and proceedings for the security of persons and property as is enjoyed by white citizens and shall be subject to like punishment, pains, penalties, taxes, licenses, and exactions of every kind, and to no other is your civil rights. That you have, like, you shall be subject. You subject, citizen. You're treated, the colored folk are treated as white citizens that had these rights at the time, in 1868, to suffer punishments of like punishments, pains, penalties, taxes, licenses, and exactions of every kind and no other. That's your civil rights. Suffer punishment and penalties. Everybody says, I got civil rights. Yeah, you got civil rights and you're enjoying every bit of it. So why are you complaining that you're getting beat down? Anyway, moving on to the most important thing I'm talking about today. Yeah, exactions, I just realized here. What do you think that word means? It only has one definition. Fascinating to me. There's very few words in the legal that has one definition. Exactions is one of those. And it's the wrongful extortion. Think about that. This is your civil rights. This is a wrongful extortion, and no other is upon you. Now get down to C. Have you read this, folks? I've asked you to. Have you thought about what I've asked you to read? Protections against impairment is C. The rights protected by this section. Let me stop there. The rights protected are what? Your suffering, penalties, punishment, pay, taxes, and all this other. That's the rights that are protected in this section. Your civil rights. The rights protected by this section is the exaction of every kind. The ex wrongful extortion is your civil rights. The protection that this section offers the government and those affiliated are protected against impairment by non-governmental discrimination and impairment under color of state law. In other words, they, there's no non-governmental organization that can avoid this upon you by what they do. They cannot interfere with your right to be wrongly extorted as a civil right. They specifically point out in 1868 against impairment by non-governmental discrimination. Oh, excuse me. That may have been an addition after. I may have been errored as I'm looking here. I hadn't noticed there was an update. At any rate. Even so, and if I go by the date I now look at, it was done. It, that could have been added in 1977 or as late as adjusted in 1991. Here's the point. It's there. 1991 is the latest date I see here that I don't know that attaches to this or not. 
1991 was a year before 1992, which was the Biodiversity Convention, wasn't it? And this whole organization, fun the minion functioning through non-governmental organizations, will not be able to relieve you of the exactions of every kind by their actions. Was I, when I read this years ago, it was just amazing. Who could predict that? Who could predict that this was coming, that they would be using non-governmental agencies to put on you more exactions, and they would take away the ability by accident to relieve you of any exaction, extortion of every kind? Was anyway a fascination to me. I think it's speaking right today. I told you years ago I'd be moving to this. Here's the very first time I've ever exposed that in any detail, and I hope you find interest in that. When you find out your right to make contract and benefit from those is is really put against you when you're dealing with the government. Because common law would be there to protect you in your contracts versus anybody else. You start to realize what these statutes are really doing. Again, Title 50, when you go read the government, it outlaws the use of, let's say, a bioweapon against you, except when it's okay for the government to do so. That was the other thing I pointed out to Clint Richards and, and Blue. Again, when you see this for the first time, if you've got any brain in your brain, in your head, a brain in your head, it, it just blew, it blew me away. I was stunned for weeks and months about this, and everybody just walks away a bit stunned when you realize this whole thing is inverted. Why, when you think you have something called a right, you have no clue what it actually is. They'll never talk to you about it like this, but when you go, the experience you have will tell you that's exactly what this is. When they tell you you have every right to use the laws, you don't, and you don't realize that those those will be implemented by someone who's in control, another non-governmental organization, like the Bar Association, cannot relieve you from these exactions of every kind that were of the white citizen invested in a, a, black, a colored people, if you will, a, a colored by the law. You're all colored by the law. I've told you this over and over. Forget your whiteness. And this thing about the white supremacy, boy, you know, that's a real interesting one as well. Forget your whiteness. You're all colored people. You're colored by the law. Go look that term up. The whole word, colored by the law, colored of law. Go look at it. Anyway, non-governmental organization, non-governmental discrimination, making you different, non-governmental agency being the Bar Association in your judicial branch, is not able to relieve you of that, even if they wanted to, but they don't want to. Anyway, I'm going to stop there. That's enough, uh, I think. I've said this before quickly. Yes, I see 14th Amendment, all that, but be, don't get don't get lost in all that. Actually, you can use the 14th Amendment backwards on the state when they start doing, you notice the word state was there. They can't, there's no state law. You can't be, relieve, relieve the impairment under state law, you realize. You see the state is subservient here. And it, it, and, it's, and it has to then be within some of the reservations in the Constitution, if the Constitution's working in a military occupation. But this comes out of what? Uh, 1868 time when it starts? That's when they were doing all this. They invested in the free black man. The freed black man was invested with these exactions of every kind as white citizens. Means that y'all as white, so-called white citizens was under it before you even got started. And so this whole thing gets turned on its head. And when you see that, it kind of, well, to me, it freed me up. It realized what kind of a prison I was in, realized that you have to start learning how to speak better. And you got to learn what the target is, and you have to learn to try to not be the target. And I don't mean physically. I mean this with this abstraction that they built around us. Now, we're, we're going to hear a whole lot about being a domestic terrorist. And the ones that squirm out of this is the ones that would be the terrorist against this system that wants to put it on you. And I thought just, uh, I had another thought about this. It's all tied in. All this news is tied in. It can be brought right in through these things, the military consequence, the thing that happened through Lincoln. It all, there's all, these words they're using are used today and they're reinvoking this entire, this entire uh, uh, occupation and, and oppression upon us. Uh, fact sheet, President Biden takes executive actions to tackle the climate crisis and abroad, aboard, uh, uh, at home and abroad creating jobs and restore scientific integrity across the federal government. If I'd have been drinking a coffee, I probably would have spit it on the screen right there. Restore scientific integrity? It's scientism, another ism. It's not science. 
And so we can listen to these head these these titles. We can realize they're telling you they're this is how they're coming to take you away. Aha! These are lunatics. These are hedonists. If if I if these are existentialists that believe that they can do whatever they want because they feel it's better for all of us. Today, President Biden will take executive action to tackle the climate crisis at home and abroad. So this guy agrees or is so ignorant that he will promote fraud. He will promote treason. Okay, same story. I have a whole lot of these links. I guess the point of that these three or four links on the same story is if you look at the wording that they use, it's all consistent and it's all using different, the, the difference is consistent but not the same. All the words though through the three or four articles are showing you different aspects of what the target is and the target is your way of life and the underpinnings of how you will sustain that life. Why? If they're after your food, as it, I anticipate what Christian at the Ice Age Farmer is saying about his seminar before in the beginning of the video, he's offering how we're going to do that. You need to go maybe listen. I don't know what is on there, but you need to go listen to that. You need to start getting some, some impetus to start working locally as they steal the food, as they, as they come in and they put more input, input and, and damage on you. As a, a law that I was talking to you last week, governors are going to be given power to, to be able to control private property and everything you do on it. You better understand how to, how to at least have a word in your mouth about the, the patent that's underlying that, like I've been telling you. But a whole lot of you being able to say that's going to be a whole lot better as we move into this. Anybody that's counter to this new normal, and you have a thought about it, there is, I think it's even in the news today. Biden is saying, if you don't think like us, we're coming out, you're a terrorist. If you think that's a joke, I think you better, you need to, I don't know what you need to do. Just You better contemplate your navel just a little bit more then stop and then start really thinking about what's going on if you have any thought about a future for you or those around you they're destroying your education listen part of this is i told you is cool that they stopped school i think it's cool if you countered with your own homeschooling and good stuff i think you're going to find opportunity as they destroy and dissolve the integrity of the of the the cohesion of society to get at you, because that's what, if I can, social Soviet does, what communism does, so that you can't organize and fight. You will have opportunity to homeschool at least. You can bring the cohesion to your own. It's getting together with neighbors that you can, are all of like mind. That's going to be an opportunity there. Whether there's a business opportunity, I don't know. I'm not really, my mind's not wired to that no more. I threw so-called business down a long time ago, sitting in a, in a bedroom when I was real young, starting to wheel and deal. I didn't have cell phones. I had two phones, one in each year, talking to making a deal. I was the, literally the middleman, I realized, between two headset handsets, talking to two people on the phone, making a deal. And I just looked at the wall across from my desk, and it was, just, it was close by. I said, what am I doing here? I don't want to do this the rest of my life. Something hit me right then, and I didn't want to be this kind of wheeler dealer type guy in the world. And I kind of abandoned that as a as a goal. That was w one of the first of a multiple step stepping back from materialism. I suspect I don't know. I don't analyze it too hard. There's a little bit of analysis, but you kind of make the decisions. There's an insight you get, and you make a decision, and you and you kind of go with it. You commit to it, and you go. And so I'm not the one to speak to about businesses. But it seems to me there's going to be an opportunity for schooling. If nothing else, it's like the silver that you're going to have in your hand, in your pocket. You can control and you can engage your the education of little ones around you, and you can give them a, how, teach them how to read, how to write, where people around them may not ever have this again. And if you think that's an, a, 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 a hyper, hyperbolic statement, I don't think you're looking very close enough. But moving over to here. Now we have the, the another attorney pipe up. Back to my tabs. Let's get all, all this stuff to talk about. I literally could talk forever, maybe say nothing. And maybe that's why I stop here. But the tabs keep me on point, and I'm only throwing things out that I hope will interest you to go check to see there's a reality of coming. And your prepperness. I mean, in fact, some of the people that did prepper, you need to come back maybe, and you need to start reminding people, I think this is really the more of the focused window 
that people are going to have to start learning how to integrate, engage, and they need to be told that because we're we need to be encouraged some for some reason beyond our own apathy, and we need to de have that done when the pressure comes. I don't know what the answer to all this is, but it's going to take more than prepper as well. It's going to take adjusting our lives. There is going to be a new normal, but are you going to be given living the life they give you, or the one you start to have to make for yourself? And now I start to feel like I'm, you know, almost pleading with with my listeners, anybody that will listen. Uh, uh, there's something telling me this is not not a gate. This is not a drill. I told you that last week. This really is not. It's coming on so slow still, but it's moving so fast as well that we we'll move on here to the, another attorney, West Virginia A. G. Morrissey leads six letter leads six state letter to President Biden to be mindful of separation of powers. I looked at that tie, I said, is that all? Well, thank you very much for stepping up in six states, the coalition of six states. Thank you very much for stepping up and saying, be mindful of the separation of powers. Now, what happened, folks, in the state of West Virginia? Are you locked down at all? What happened in COVID? Did he step up and say, what about the separation of powers here? That The legislature made a law and the state and the and the, and the executive didn't follow it to identify the infectious agent and then the the Supreme Court adopted this fraud. Where is this attorney in there that he's telling Biden to be mindful of separation of powers? I appreciate there's an attorney, a general, stepping up to say, my, like he's going to say something more than send a letter anyway. Lincoln proved this on us wrong, how wrong that would be anyway to move. But anyway, appreciate the letter, but Mr. Attorney, Mr. Bar member. What about all these separation of power problems you're witnessing and not doing anything about? You know, moving on to a bit of the story. West Virginia Attorney General, 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 Military Patrick Morrissey led a six-state coalition in writing a letter that encourages Joe Biden, encourages, like that's real forceful, to be mindful of the Constitution, separation of power, and authority of sovereign states relative to that of the federal government. Sovereign what, folks? You just heard the states can't make a law to stop the impairment of the abuse against you. Anyway, according to the press release, Morrissey's office said the letter says the coalition will be, quote, vigilant in watching, watching, which we're going to continue to watch, vigilant in watching for an opposing, opposing, oh, we're going to oppose how? Federal overreach, especially when such action puts jobs and civil liberties at risk. What's he talking about? He's talking about all this, these restrictions placed on your energy sector. He's in West Virginia, folks. The, he's talking about the be the miners being destroyed back there, the people that work on the pipelines, the Indian tribes being destroyed, the business of the rails that's going to benefit, the trucking industry that's going to benefit when you don't have a pipe. Go look at the owners of that. Is that carbon neutral? No. Now when they, then they're going to attack those. And so... Yes, I don't know about a pipeline going through everybody's property, but if the property owner understands to protect himself correctly and decides it's okay, that's not my not my property to say no. There's utility behind a pipeline. As long as you do get permission of everybody, I may not like it even so, but that's not my decision, not my land. But when you find out that they've interrupted something, and all that investment went into there too as well, all that waste, And you realize what they're actually doing, and they're, they're transforming your, your transportation system, and then they're going to destroy that as well. It's not looking very good when you look down the road, that if this guy is only worried about separation of powers, and he says we're, only going, to, we're going to be watchful, and we're going to oppose, and then you realize they can't oppose. This is a hollow discussion. For me, it would be more powerful to have him say he exposed the fraud of covid that it was a detriment to the people, it was in excess of the jurisdiction of the executive, in violation of the separation of powers of the state, and he mined his own house. That would have helped me to watch. I do appreciate the words to come out and remind people there's supposed to be these authorities that are supposed to be there. Uh, I'll give you two links on, on this. Again, each, each story I read had a slightly different elements to it. It may be down just to how they reference the statuses, just words that they use to show us there's a little bit more to the story inside what you're reading than just a story to read. Anyway, so they go through all this constitutionality stuff, 
And I'm wondering where the people are to inform, to come after and say, well, what did, why didn't you do the fraud against COVID if you're so worried about the separation of powers problem? Where Where is that? I give you a link to his letter. We can go through read it. I was going to read it, a little bit of it. It's really, I get to the point I'm talking about it. It's really, you're either going to go read this to see what they're saying and what their misdirections are and what they think they're doing. I would use these letters to do exactly what I just said and opened with. Well, you're so worried about the separation of powers, those of you in West Virginia now. You talk to this attorney general. You're so worried about the separation of powers. Why didn't you check when the executive made an emergency crisis without finding out what the heck was causing it? Where's the demonstrable exigency that you challenged was in non-existence? The fraud that destroyed the economy locally. Where are you, Mr. Attorney General? in this war. See, folks, I don't care what they say. To me, this is a letter showing he's derelict in another part of the very same subject matter he wants to write a letter to encourage a president to not overstep. That's not going to help you. He's mis mis missing it, like all the attorneys tend to do. I just can't say this enough. I don't know what, I don't know what more to say. You really have to why is it the attorneys are missing it everywhere and you can clearly show a fraud in many, any other subject matter as well, not just this COVID? I don't care where you look at it. When you go look at the black and white and look at how it's being implemented, nobody, no organ, no sovereign, no agent of a sovereign seems to understand or follow any of the black and white. Tulsi Gabbard, domestic terrorism bill is a target of almost half of the country. Well, that was when she said this back on the 24th. Yes, because they were looking like they were targeting Trump people. Folks, this is the type of stuff that in, you're already all suffering exactions of every kind. How can she say it's only targeting half when there's not going to be any way to remove the discrimination against you by that law, by any non-governmental organization? or a state. Anyway, straight up, this domestic terrorism bill is coming through, and that's what the other thing I see, if you read far enough, I'll remember what I was going to say. Relative to 42 U.S.C. 1981, the year, what law came up in through that was the, what was called the Ku Klux Klan law. You're going to find these underpinnings of this new domestic terrorism bill that's just, I got the link here, and I just found it, it's been put in. It relates to Title 40, Title 28, excuse me, I'm missing, missing the numbers here. I think it's Title uh, Title 18, 241. Some of you know this, 241, 242. You'll spout this off, but you don't necessarily understand its, its source. I've used it, but you have to use it in a particular context. Title 18, USC 241, and then it was all the uh, odd numbers there. 245, 247, and 249. If you go look at those, this is the Ku Klux Klan Act and the hate crimes bill that they're tacking onto this. This bill is supposed to go over what they call now white supremacists. Now, white in the law has exactions of every kind to pay already. Now they're going to put even more scrutiny on this class of people. Well, they came for those people and I'd said nothing. They came for that people and I said nothing. They came for those over there and I said nothing. Now they're dragging me away and there's no one to save me, folks. Is what this happens to be. They're coming through what's called the Ku Klux Klan Act, the 241-242. It's supposed to be put on someone under color of law coming against you to violate you. In particular, the one I like is on the highway. Two of them come on the highway to interfere with your rights. And yet you try to sue on that. No one wants to give you the remedy because you don't have the rights you have is to pay, to be punished. And until you can remove a, a status and put you in a different status, that that's not supposed to happen that's going to be more difficult for you to understand how to remove and then out those that won't do the real law. But terrorism bill is to target. Tulsi Gabbard inside the government is saying, alert. You read the bill, get a link to it, and they mention uh, to, specifically where the what they're coming through is the Ku Klux Klan Act. Now, I suppose white supremacists, there's a, I guess there's no, it's undefined. That's another problem with the bill. It's undefined. No, it's her problem is with this. How do you, if you don't define it, how would you do anything? And this is what happens. You have these these undefined things that end up the mission creeps. I mentioned in a subheading last last week. Mission creeps, not just mission creep, but creeps that actually use this. And so we have more studies, more stories about this 
alarm that's being raised by Tulsi Gabbard. She's seeing that it's a problem. You need to know it's a problem. This is what I told you was coming in spades when they were ramping up in order to make you more easily, Vince, the domestic terrorist they created you to be in 9-11. But I told you in December 31st, I think it was, 1999, as we went into the medical horror, and I said medical martial law is coming because that, in hindsight, 2020 being triggered on the point is going to be developed for you to worsen your status and bring on the ability to make you, call you someone who is doesn't care for the rest, an existential. You become the existential threat to their good do-gooderism, another ism. And to show you the cancel culture idea, and I really don't really get into all these terms, I just parrot them somewhat. To me, it's all just a it's a psychotic fraud, so I just I don't get into it. I don't understand some of this stuff either. The binaries, all that, all the gender stuff. Remember, in the law, there's no regard for gender, so why are you talking about gender and mixing it with legal? It doesn't mean any sense. It makes no sense to me. But no one calls out this problem. At any rate, if you speak out in the wrong way, you're going to be denounced, and your speech will be curtailed. If you don't speak, if you don't do cancer culture speak, which is not to speak, essentially, but anyway, legislature mocks trans Biden nominee on Facebook and apologizes. Now, I'm not into attacking people anyway. I'm not into doing any of that. I don't like calling people names. I'd rather look at what they do. I'd like to make you know, friends. I'd like to be friends. I don't know. I've just never been a, a guy to make war on, on anything. I've never never had a family. We never did. I, that, was, that wasn't in, even in our thoughts. doesn't mean that. I'm a pushover, but it, it doesn't, you know, I'd rather go out and make friends first. I really like, appreciate that. My whole, one of the things in my, when I was coming up and what I was going to do get, when, when I get out of school is I just want to travel the world and just meet more people. On the other hand, I'm kind of a bit like Grimner. Humans are dirty, dirty animals. <laughs> and they can be. And that's the part, the negative part really bothers me a lot. However, this is me now. In the beginning, I was, just wanting to see the world. I thought great language was cool. Not that I could do much of it. I tried to have a couple of languages underneath me. Wanted to see the world. Wanted to get around, see what other people did in the world. What is this place? So that's that's my core. Was it used to be carefree, all that stuff. Well, okay, all that kind of got beat down out of me. It still sits there as a little seed, maybe to regerminate, maybe, but it's all kind of get beat down. So to me, I don't like into. I don't know about people, what they want to do. That's up to them. So I wouldn't be doing this. But the point is that when you have an, a statement that you make, and you have to make an apology for something that you said, that really, in a way, I don't know how it was an attack, and he comes back and he says, I had no idea. And someone else, when they heard that he had no idea, then even accepts the apology for the apology's sake, and that it wasn't just an, maybe it was more of an ignorance. It's kind of problematic in, in my mind that you don't have an, abi an ability to even say something that's offensive without apologizing for it. It's a problem. But anyway, a Pennsylvania legislator shared, legislator shared a Facebook, an image mocking the appearance of a state's recently departed uh, health secretary, Dr. Rachel Levine, a transgender woman who has been nominated to serve in the Biden administration and then offered a general apology Saturday. The state representative, Jeff Pyle, a Republican from Armstrong and Indiana counties in western Pennsylvania, said to Facebook that he had no idea that the post mocking Levine, quote, would be received as poorly as it was, close quote, but that, quote, tens of thousands of heated emails assured me it was, close quote. I owe an apology, and I offer it humbly, Pyle said, not specifically apologizing to Levin or other transgender people, but later repeating an apology to all affected. Here's the thing I'm noticing about this. This is the cancel culture. If you don't say what they want, you're going to be set against. And this is setting the bad precedent in the news relative to the domestic terrorist and white supremacy becomes any thought of any supremacy. In particular, this so-called transgender woman, remember, preferably, if I understand the pronouns, this is an it, 
when you put it in the context of grammar, I don't know how to use they or them for one. And it's an it. And then every pronoun has to have a Z before it to be proper and to replace the S for the he, uh, for she and he and other things. And so I've told you on a prior broadcast, you, I, uh, my only understanding is that I have to now identify all these characters as zits. Because I don't understand what they're doing. Now. And I want to be po 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 politically correct because i got a cancel culture that's going to come after me. It's not the world that I want to live in. I don't want to be imposed upon by someone's do-good or impositions because of how they took something. Because it, maybe they're not so stabilized, stable in their own in their own selves in order to, and they're abused. I think they're all abused, to tell you the truth. I've told you about this. That I have to now tr tread on eggshells. That when you now speak about someone who embraces that in the office of president and then every other state that you see put COVID in, because this is the same mentality, that you're walking into a future that you have no protection in after the fact. I had no idea. Yeah, no notice, folks. You better learn this due process point. So my point on that, I don't know what really all happened on that. I don't necessarily, well, he mocked him on a picture. I mean, I guess you, now you can't draw, you know, stick figures against people. I mean, you can't do, tr what, they did it against Trump and no one talked about it. Now all of a sudden it's a big deal. And there's a whole lot more behind this character as well. Not the representative, but the one that's moving through. You need to know about the background on all this and the source of what's coming for you through a health director, this way no less. That uh, this domestic terrorism alert that issues across the United States in in Biden's early in Biden's term is nothing to be to be ignored, because that thing that just happened to legislator is going to be happening to everyone. Not just white supremacists. You will be deemed a white supremacist. You will have white privilege when you try to assert your own position, your own uh, uh, opinion, your own title even against the climate change because you are don't care about others. Just like you're hearing in the COVID, you don't wear a mask, you must not care about others. It's all fabricated. You all can believe it, and you can all just turn your head and not engage it or whatever. This is going to amp up and get more and more in your face. Domestic terrorism alert issued for the United States early in Biden's term is not a joke. It's happening. The National Terrorism Bulletin was issued by the Department of Homeland Security and warned of the potential of lingering violence from people motivated by anti-government sentiment. If you don't agree with the government, you're going to be deemed a terrorist. Is already in place. Now they're going to put teeth into it. This has happened way back in the 80s. There's something that happened in the 80s. I don't even know if people understand. It came very close, very close to actual stuff coming down in the beginning 80s, folks. I don't know if anybody understands that. I would have never known about it unless I was approached and uh, then finally found out it was what was getting ready to go was real. Not like we hear the pseudo junk we're, we're seeing today for our entertainment. Storm the Capitol nonsense. No, no, no. There was something happening in the middle. You remember the Montana Freeman and all that? That was like a spin off of what was really underneath the skin of this country. It was very interesting and somewhat scary. Now, I haven't heard anything like that come back around, so I'm not so thrilled about what I hear, all these so-called militia patriot kind types. Maybe they're working on stuff and I'm not part of the, I'm not on, I'm not on the inside anymore, because I'm not actually out either. Maybe they're out there. But there's something underneath the skin of this country that I, boy, I don't know if I want to see it happen. I'd rather start the interpos interposition type position and move ourselves to justify that. I, and I almost hope that that's there, but done right. But I don't hear anything about that. But everyone's going to be deemed this domestic terrorism if you say the wrong thing. Anti-government sentiment will be anti-climate change. If you get this, they, they asked for your death already. If you didn't understand the telegraph that I told you, they're asking for your death if you don't believe in climate change. The university, non-governmental organization. You don't think that's your university system, folks? If it's not the bar also? It is the bar because they're a non-governmental organization. They sing the high praises to the UN and they're known. They have that status. 
and they are precluded from relieving you of the exactions of every kind that it says right there in the law that you're going to have as your only civil right to pay extor wrongful extortions of every kind. Biden uh, takes action to address new new threat to domestic terrorism, new debt of the threat of domestic terrorism. It's all fabricated, but you're on the on the other end. Any you or anyone who doesn't agree with him or them. Biden DHS issues domestic terror alert warning of objections to government authority. If you object, well, that's the whole thing you have to do in court when they start making a bad record. You got to object. That is, by definition, objecting against the government position. You're coming against the government position on COVID is a domestic terrorism, as they're going to define it. And I have the alert, direct, direct uh, the National Terrorism Advisory System Bulletin. And you go through and you read this, and then they, you'll see the fallacy because they geared up for what happened at, at the, on the inauguration, and they extended it out on this potential threat till April. And now you've noticed nothing's happening. It's how they make stuff up, and then they carry it on, and then they carry it on, and carry it on. And they make, they get people to believe there's this violent extremist out there that's going to somehow interfere with any Washington. They, they talk high praises that they're going to be there to protect you. They're not protecting you. They were there to protect you. They wouldn't have let this president commit treason. They wouldn't let the Congress commit uh, treason by pledging allegiance to mob rule. You wouldn't allow states to uh, destroy economies on fraud, admitted, Okay, you wouldn't do this if your domestic enemy was actually those that are making being domestic enemies. This is the this is how you can compare that. You know them when you see them. Or the, what I didn't understand is it's registered trademark. The phrase "if you see something, say something." I understand it's a trademarked by the New York uh, Transportation Authority or something. I didn't know that. If you see something, say something. That's what they're promoting again, folks with this new call for the be on the lookout for domestic terrorism. This is you. This, they're up after you. Anybody with an objection to what you see in the government now has turned to terrorism. It's not, but that's what they got people afraid and running and feared, and you will not step against it, and that is what's going to win the day. If you object to the government, you are a domestic terrorist. You don't understand administratively you object to things they're doing like climate change or COVID. That will be considered domestic terror. You think not wearing a mask in a store and being called out for harming others and you don't care for others is going to be your worst problem? Please look forward into the future. These guys have us. And until some solid things go on, I don't know what to say more. Have something in your in your pocket. Have something in your statements to at least buffer the presumptions against you. For all you all that know about presumptions, you're looking right at them. They're setting them up. No one's taking any. I know is not taking the right action to make any kind of record that that's not so or challenge that position. Now, how partly are they doing this? I'm going to get to one tab quickly here. It's kind of a little off what I'm just saying here, but the next step to government data tracking is the Internet of Things stating and telling you this thing since 9-11, this thing that they've controlled, this thing they've built up, the military structure, for infrastructure, for transformation by the military is now agreed to. This is months ago, I think, this story came out. United States government agencies from the military to law enforcement have been buying up mobile phone data from private sector to use in gathering intelligence, monitoring, and adversaries in apprehending criminals. They've been doing this months and months before this, folks, that they come out and now declare a domestic ter terrorism alert. They have your data, folks, before they got here. Now the U.S. Air Force is experimenting with the next step. U.S. Air Force Research Laboratory is testing a commercial software platform that taps mobile phones as a window onto usage of hundreds of millions of computers, routers, fitness trackers, modern automobiles, and other network devices known collectively as the Internet of Things. I don't know how many times I've talked to you about all this. And again, not the only one, but it has been part and parcel to telling you the tools and surveillance weapons of whom you're against, and it's them is us, folks. 
Not only is it us not responding, it's them we thought was us that aren't. This thing you think, you look at your civil rights and think you got a right, and it's actually the license of the government to impose upon you wrongful extortions of every kind. I want to point out something here. Is this a link? More ideas on how to have something more in your mind. There's a link I was sent called Arrested for Being a Foreigner. You're all foreigners, for if you don't know this, and this is the thing I don't understand about people watching other videos, but the audit, the audit was the website, goes through a fairly decent analysis of a traffic stop of someone that came from a foreign country who didn't have a license, and a cop, being the jerks that they are, uh, imposes all, all his bias on him. You have to listen to what the guy talks about, the psychological bias that's built in that the guy, the cop doesn't know about that causes him to do all these wrong things, and he gets eventually gets caught on. What I want you to hear, you need to hear this so you understand the dynamic that allows you one more tool in your repertoire of defenses to be able to, at the moment, you don't get smart with them. You just start using, you know they're operating under these biases, how to be able to get the information you need. He also shows you how if you know the law, you know it better than these guys, cops, because they're not trained, and that proves out in this case, that you can build a record as you speak there, the thing, the record you should be. I want you to see this because everyone is a foreigner to this thing that's coming on you. It's interesting how I looked at this, it was sent to me, but I looked at this, this is, this is not about some guy from a foreign Muslim country who doesn't know about, the, about our driving laws. The state law said he had every right if he hadn't been here for six months. That's the residency requirement. Every one of you knows this. And so your answer would be, I haven't been here for six months. But it wouldn't be to take take any lip, not that you were get antagonistic with, with, the, with the cop, but you would just say, no, I'm not resident here. Your answer would be better than someone who can't speak the language that is being beat down by a cop who doesn't understand what he's really supposed to be doing. Notwithstanding the commercial, the misapplication of commercial statute and the misapplication of federal commercial statute through through state law. I want you to see this arrested for being foreigner because you are the foreigner. You're foreign to this thing that's coming on us. And so what happens when you start having to defend yourself? It's seeming to be telegraphed in the future, into the future. In Mexico, women take front lines as vigilantes as the government does not protect them of the local criminals. That's your government, folks, is the local criminals. They're considered vigilantes to try and defend themselves. That's you in the United States of America when you start saying, whoa, I don't want to take this from you. you de then you're deemed to be a domestic terrorist. A lot of it's going to be because you didn't have the right word in your mouth when you went and addressed them. And so, I don't know, again, it, it's going, we're in a, com we're in a complex situation of multidimensional attack. It is somewhat understandable. It's understandable by making common denominator deductions and moving from there. I've been able to lighten the load on my mind and keeping up with this in reducing making common denominators of common things. Like when you see, when you know them, when you see them, I don't have to deal with their complexity. I just have to understand now they are that and what are they going to do being that. Now I have one thing to focus on and it's not that much, it's still a battle, but it's not near as, as trying to trying to plug holes in a, in, a, in, a, in a sieve and trying to get water from a sieve, right? So that's what I've been trying to offer you behind the woodshed. I hope you uh, do appreciate all this. And pass the word, folks. Thank you, Grimner, for what you do at Real Liberty. They're reallibertymedia.com as I race to the end. Uh, thank you very much for letting us be there and giving everybody the ability to have an archive. And everybody else who syndicates the broadcast, I appreciate it. I'll be with you next week, Tech Diffs or Nature Willing. Well, that's another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, journey with purpose. Up a can of whoop ass feels like. Son, 
I just opened a whole case of wolf ass. 